as we start a new week. <laughs> a new week of who knows what. <clears throat> right? Last week was quite a week. What do you think this week will top it? I don't know. Let's hope, let's hope America sees a little recovery this week from the tremendous damage done to it last week by the Biden regime, which is what it is. It's a regime. It's not an administration. And uh, as I was explaining, uh, actually on Steve Bannon's show earlier today, uh, where, where um, I mean, we're in a situation in this country that, that You've got to go back to the Cold War and you've got to go back to the Second World War and countries like uh, East Germany, uh, Soviet Union, I guess China now, uh, Venezuela. I, I don't know that the justice system is as bad in Venezuela in terms of Maduro going after his enemies and criminal, criminalizing them. Um, Probably, but I just don't know enough about how their criminal justice system works. I know the rest of the country is a disaster. Uh, so who would we compare ourselves to third world countries, but the really bad ones, where uh, the new regime prosecutes the old regime? That is exactly what's being done here. I mean, the idea of four indictments, four, all in the election year, I don't know. You got to be really stupid not to figure out what that is, right? If you think that's about justice, I don't know. You need help. You can't figure out that Biden has, you know, no chance of winning. Um, not even sure he knows he's running. So his regime, his apparatchiks, are doing one stupid, crazy indictment after another. But I'm going to begin today with a very, very sad situation and, and, and one, that, um, one that should not be ignored because, uh, uh, you know, you, you, you wish in many ways all the victims of murder could be recognized and uh, given their opportunity for justice. Uh, but, you know, they don't, all, they don't all come to your attention or reach a level of national, you know, national uh, uh, scope but these three did and uh, this this is something that should never happen in the united states as many things should not happen in the united states but this is uh, one of them uh on on sunday uh a man named ryan i believe it's pronounced palmeter or palmetter uh who uh, it was only 20 i think 21 years old and a person with a obviously a history of mental illness, uh, a history where he was actually um, at one point evalu evaluated, and then the evaluation turned out to not reach a conclusion, so it didn't end up in his record. Uh, he was um, the police were called to his home for domestic violence by his parents that resulted did not result in an arrest. And I tell you all that because. The purchase of these guns that he used, an AR-15 style rifle and a Glock pistol, were purchased legally as, uh, as the uh, really excellent sheriff here, T.K. Waters, said. Um, there was nothing illegal because uh, although he had this history of suspected mental illness, it never resulted in anything official. And although he had this one situation of a complaint, it never resulted in, again, anything. He never was arrested for it, which happens a lot with domestic violence, right? Now, I, uh, I could tell you something about New York that I changed, which is even if there's no complaint, I would make a record of all of them so that if you had more than one or two, we didn't necessarily have to have the woman's testimony, which and I think it was his parents who called uh, on this particular situation. But uh, he, um, he went to a Dollar General store in, right outside of Jacksonville. And uh, he, he, we're going to we're gonna show you this. Uh, and if you don't want to watch it, you know, just look away for a bit. Um, 
We're going to show you him uh, shooting into a car and then going into the store where he hitting 52 year old Angela Michelle Carr's Kia while she sat in a parking lot, killing her. Authorities say he then walked in, shooting and killing 19 year old employee Anult Joseph Laguerre Jr. and 29 year old Gerald Gallion, the father of a four year old girl. She's so young. So his victims, uh, if you want, you can show the pictures here. I have them right over here. His victims were Angela Michelle Carr. Angela, Angela was 52 years old. She was the uh, woman uh, killed in the car when you saw the shooting in the car. Uh, uh, she was the, an Uber driver. And she was dropping off a passenger at the Dollar General on Saturday. I'm sorry, it was on Saturday that it took place. When the gunman opened fire, he killed her inside her vehicle. Her daughter, her daughter Ashley, who was 36, who must be quite a young woman, says um, she was shot in a car. She never had a chance. I think you see her picture there. She's a lovely, lovely looking woman. And Ashley says she, uh, she knows that the family of the gunman, listen to this, the family of the gunman who killed himself at the scene feels grief as well. She said she is praying for them. Ashley, uh, you have our prayers, our sympathy, our condolences. This should never have happened. It shouldn't have happened for the reason that it happened. This man was out to kill black people. It shouldn't have happened for any reason. Uh, the uh, second victim was Anault Joseph A.J. Laguerre Jr., who was only 19. He had just graduated from high school. Um, his father said he was very, very bright. He hadn't even lived his life yet, his dad said. And for somebody to take his life away, it's outrageous. Just because you don't like the color of his skin. Take his life away. 19 years old, he was working there at the, at, at, at the store. And I think he began to flee and was shot and killed. He had just started working at the Dollar General to make some change in his pocket. The only thing he likes in life is to work, his dad said. He doesn't ask nobody for nothing. Shouldn't have to bury my son. You're damn right you shouldn't. He's too young for that. He was just trying to live. And this animal didn't give him a chance to do that. And the third person uh, to, to, to be shot was coming into the store. Gerald Deshaun Gallion, who was only 29, has a daughter. The mother of his daughter described him as a devoted father and a co-parent. Nice, good man and a good father. And again, of course, just no reason for this man to die other than the hatred inside uh, inside uh, this Palmeter. Um, now, uh, Palmeter, during the shooting, during the shooting or, or right before it, or uh, texted his pa parents to go look at his note and his manifesto and whatever other crazy stuff he had. And his father did that, and immediately they called the police, which is to the credit, I guess, of the family, right, if you think about that. Uh, but it was it was too late. He was already there, and before uh, before that, before that he had he had visited the co the college. I think it's um, Edward Waters University, which is a historically a historic black college has about a thousand students, and he was spotted on campus just kind of like driving around or going around, and he was told to leave because he refused to identify himself. And he was seen putting on his bullet-resistant vest and mask before he drove away. Then he drove a short distance to the Dollar General store where he carried out his deadly actions that you saw a brief description of. The, the, the sheriff, A.K. 
A.K. Waters. I give a great deal of credit to keeping this, uh, T.K. Waters, rather, the county sheriff of Duval County. Uh, his descriptions, which I watched uh, in detail the other day, were really excellent. And the way in which he described it, including the racial motivation and the unjustified nature of this, um, I don't know. I don't know exactly what it was, but there was something about the authority in his voice and the command that he had that uh, I think had a lot to do with keeping the the, the reaction to this uh, uh, a very disturbing one and a very emotional one, but not a violent one. Uh, thank God. And this is going to be fully investigated to find out if there's anything else to this. But uh, Sheriff Waters. His original appraisal is that this was a singular act by a lone uh, mad person, but a mad person who knew exactly what he was doing. Uh, today, uh, uh, or yesterday, Fox uh, News revealed uh, an, a, a video with the prosecutor general of uh, Ukraine who was uh, the subject of Joe Biden's bribe, uh, bribery situation. He was the one that um, Biden forced the president of uh, Ukraine, Poroshenko, to fire. And um, I, I would say I was somewhat shocked that that was all presented um, as if this is new. I found found that somewhat disturbing because I first uh, um, I first learned of Shokin in um, in December of 2018 and learned that uh, Shokin had been fired because of his focus on Burisma, the crooked company owned by Mykola Zloshevsky, the one who told the FBI he paid a ten million dollar bribe to the Bidens. Um, and um, and that Shokin was fired and gotten out of the way, so a new prosecutor could come in and fix the case for uh, for Zolshevsky, which he did. The case was fixed. The case was dismissed. And um, and it was it was really that uh, act that occasioned the large payments to the Biden family, because Zolshevsky employed Biden who had been made the point man for Ukraine and probably the most powerful person in Ukraine because he controlled the purse strings of a country that had no money. Um, so when Zolshevsky was afraid that the Ukrainian government was going to take his company, and they did try to take it in England, he paid a bribe there, and then they tried to do it in Ukraine. Shokin did, and he was fired. Um, and then the new prosecutor, approved by Biden, Dismissed the case against against um, against Burisma, and Biden was paid according to Soshevsky. Hunter was paid five, and Joe was paid five, plus an additional approximately two million dollars a year uh, for sitting on a board where they had no other reason for being there other than to fix the case. He and Devin Archer. And there also are undisclosed laundered payments that have never been investigated because the FBI never bothered to interview the woman who was a high-level person in Burisma who was willing to give them the offshore bank account. She is yet to be interviewed. Uh, now, everything I just told you, uh, I found out and then corroborated when I uh, went ahead, because I just don't go ahead and just say things as I think you have found out, because now this is, this is probably, you know, the fourth or fifth situation in which I've been proven to be telling the truth, and all of the Biden and Democratic groups have been proven to be liars. Um, so uh, I set up in, um, in January of 2019, a uh, Skype uh, uh, interview of Shokin myself so that I could talk to him directly. 
And Shokin told me uh, during that uh, audio interview uh, everything that uh, everything and more that uh, Brian Kilmeade disclosed yesterday. Maybe I'm wrong, but it seemed as if he made it appear as if he was disclosing it for the first time. Of course, I had gotten it uh, four years ago. Now, the interesting thing is um, when the FBI had no interest in it and uh, the U.S. Attorney's Office and uh, even the Congress, the Senate, was a little worried about doing something to their buddy Biden, uh, I, gave it to, um, I gave it to two people so it would go public. I gave it to Sean Hannity and I gave it to John uh, Solomon who himself had had uh, some of this evidence. Uh, Sean did not, or I don't think he did. And I went on television and on Fox revealed it for the first time in February of 2019. And uh, John Solomon also did it in his column in February of 2019. And uh, some of the tape was played of Shokin with all of the things that Kilmeade presented yesterday I, without crediting what was done in the past. Sounds a little funny to me, huh? Doesn't seem right. And the reason, it, reason it, 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 it's also distorted is if you had pointed out how far back this was known, you'd realize that Biden could have been prosecuted well before he ran for president. Uh, Shokin was ready to testify, ready to come to America and testify. He was blocked by our State Department and the FBI and the ambassador, who subsequently was fired and made a big deal that she was unfairly fired. She blocked Shokin from coming. As well as, as you'll find out from me, not from them, uh, Biden not only forced the firing of Shokin, he then created a false story that it was done because Shokin was corrupt. There's not the slightest bit of evidence in the Ukrainian files of any corruption. Um, not only that, there's a recorded conversation between Biden and the president of Ukraine in which President of Ukraine explains that Shokin wasn't corrupt and more or less that this has to be created it is created with the help of Soros's not-for-profit uh, NGOs in other European countries. So they make up a, a, a false story that Shokin was corrupt. Um, in fact, that's all, and that the case had been debunked. Of course, that's completely contradicted by the fact that in February of 2016, Shokin arrested the Burisma company, put out an arrest warrant for Sloshevsky, closed the company down. Uh, it was well known that he did that. Hardly the act of somebody who was corrupt. Um, within two weeks, he was, he was fired. Now, wasn't disclosed until two months later or maybe a month and a half later. Reason for that being they had to find a, they had to find a patsy. And they did. But the one they found wasn't a lawyer. And they had to clear him with Biden, which is also on tape. Now, think about that. And I, I don't know if Kilmeade presented this. Maybe he'll present it as some kind of breaking news you know, at some point. But of course, this, was, this breaking news was revealed four years ago. Um, I'm sorry, three years ago, because this was obtained by Chanel Rion of OAN. The, the president of Ukraine fires his attorney general based upon the threats of the vice president of the United States, threats not to get absolutely critical money needed for a country that had no money. They were down to $800,000 when the crooks left and took off, including Sloshevsky, Biden's friend. They also had to go to Biden to get the new prosecutor approved. That's on tape. Now, have you ever heard of that before? 
the vice president of the United States gets a prosecutor fired in a foreign country, just happens to be a prosecutor that's investigating his son and his son's company. And then he has to approve the new prosecutor. Why would he have to approve the new prosecutor? Because the new prosecutor is going to dismiss the case, which he does. This unbelievable case against Burisma, which our own State Department believed was a thoroughly corrupt company, gets dismissed. In fact, you realize how strong a case this is? And then if you go back, and you can look uh, right now if you want, I, I ask you to take a look at that. That happens to be the podcast with a complete interview of Shokin, which I did in person in Ukraine. And that was done in December of 2019 with Shadel, Shadel Rion of OAN News. Uh, this was, in fact, the first, this was, in fact, the first uh, uh, in-person interview of Shokin. Not Kil and Kilmeade, I don't think, met with him. And I spent the day with him, and in it, he reveals everything that uh, is now presented as, I don't know, new news or something, or plus a lot more, including what I told you about um, the new prosecutor being, uh, being, um, approved by, uh, by Biden, the fact that the case was dismissed, the fact that he was fired at Biden's uh, consistent pressure on uh, Poroshenko to get rid of him, uh, the fact that he resigned uh, for that purpose, and that, the, uh, uh, and that the corruption charges were made up afterwards to cover, to cover Biden. So... Um, if you would go back, if you want to see the proof of this, just go to RudyGiulianiCS.com, RudyGiulianiCS.com. Go hit the little portion of the uh, website that says 2020 Podcast. Go back to my, actually, my third podcast, and you'll see that picture of Shokin. You'll see me sitting there and interviewing him in Ukraine. I believe that Chanel and I are the only two people that ever met with him from the United States and interviewed him about this. The FBI certainly had no interest. It just revealed one of the biggest crimes in the history of America. But the FBI has no interest in the biggest crime in the history of America. And that podcast appeared in February of 2020. All of this is before Biden announced for president. And the reason it's important that you know that it goes back that far. Number one, this could have been done before Biden ran for president if we had an honest government. And number two, Fox sort of deprived you of the right to know that. And the really interesting thing is they played a material role in originally revealing this, although nothing you know, was done with it by the FBI. Uh, they sat on it and uh, the Biden people convinced the press that this was all a bunch of lies, that I was a liar, uh, like they're trying to do with this case uh, against me. Gee, this is about the fifth time that they accused me of being a liar, a Russian agent, and I've proven to be absolutely 100% truthful with you. Maybe uh, you see a pattern. So we'll be back in a minute. And we'll take a little break for a a very, very important uh, notice, and you better follow up on this. The Towers Foundation delivers on its promise to do good and never forget the sacrifices America's greatest heroes have made for us. Heroes who risked their lives to keep our communities and our country safe. Heroes like United States Marine Corps Captain and Pilot John Jeremy Sachs. Captain Sachs sustained fatal injuries when his military aircraft crashed during training, killing him and five other service members. He's remembered by loved ones as courageous, brilliant, and devoted to his career, family, and friends. John is survived by his wife, Amber, who gave birth to their second daughter three months after his death. Tunnels of Towers paid the mortgage on the family home for Amber 
and their two daughters. The foundation has helped over 1,000 military and first responder families navigate the worst of times by removing the burden of a mortgage payment. Our nation's heroes and their families need your help now more than ever. Donate $11 a month to Tunnel to Towers at T2T.org. T2T.org. That's T, the number two T.org. T2T.org. Please donate now. T2T.org. T, the number two T.org. Now, if you want to call and uh, get in on a conversation, this is the number to call, 646-573-5177. There it is. I'll show it to you. Sometimes it's easier to see it. See? There it is. Okay. 646-573-5177. Is that correect? Yes. Okay. Just want to make sure we got the right one. So how about we uh, just take a quick peek at a big liar. That is a picture of a big liar. Do you see the picture of the big liar? Does everyone see the picture of the big liar? That big liar is known as former governor who left with one of the most uh, uh, dis highest disapproval ratings of any governor, Chris Christie who used to be a friend of mine until he started lying about me. Well, Chris Christie has sort of kind of made it clear that he's a liar because he signed the pledge that he would support the winner of the Republican primary. But he, uh, um, but he, but he said, quote, he'll take it just as seriously as Don Donald Trump took the pledge in 2016. I assume he means that Donald Trump lied in 2016. I don't remember that, but I'm going to go along with him for a minute. So Christie says, it's okay for me to lie because Trump lied. What a jackass. What a complete jackass. First of all, that's about that. That's the, um, that's the usual excuse of a major criminal. You know, it's okay for me to steal because somebody else stole. It's okay for me to shoot somebody because somebody else shot somebody. It's okay for me to take a little bribe because somebody else took a bribe. It's okay for me to lie because he lied. First of all, I don't remember him lying, but what does that have to do with Christie lying? Christie signed the pledge that he's going to support the Republican nominee, but he doesn't intend to. We all know who the Republican nominee is going to be. Does he, I mean, tell me exactly what else Christie has to do so you don't vote for him because this guy's dangerous. Because I know he's lied about me. And I don't like it when people lie about me. And a lot of people lie about me. But I, not usually Republicans. Usually it's Bidenistas who lied about me, lie about me and communists. Well, there, take a, look at the, take a look at him. Because if you see him, if you ever see him around, you'll know uh, that he's a big liar. It's also a disgrace. It's a real disgrace what he's doing. He's running the campaign by just running against Trump. Doesn't have anything to offer. And boy, Vivek knocked him out the other night. And Vivek goes up. What is he at? Six points? Four points? Jeez. I think he'd, I think he'd have some votes in New Jersey, but I guess they remember that he left. Very unpopular. I guess those people tied up on the bridge are still pissed off at him. Mayor, didn't Chris Christie close a beach or something and then he was seen on it privately? Like, like I remember that when he was the governor of Why, New Jersey. Why, didn't want to see him in a bathing suit? <laughs> I, don't, I forgot <laughs> what the circumstances were, but he closed like a couple of beaches that. and he went there by himself. I remember and he got, you, you remember that, right, Rob? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Rob's, Rob's from New Jersey. Yeah, so. yeah, you, Rob's from New Jersey. Yeah. So you met, am I, I'm not crazy, right? No, that's, it, was, that's what, it was huge right. news. Oh, like, no, he's like a Democratic right. governor. Right, right. The picture of him on the beach. Do you think he's alone. really a Democrat? Yeah. He's definitely Democrat. That's he like, like and that's like, well, you, you should shut up because that's like your governor. Right. Whitmer. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. like Whitmer and her boat. Yeah, yeah, her boat. Yeah, nobody, nobody can have a, nobody can have a boat but her husband. Right, right. That's Don't like. You know who I'm married to? That's like, that's like Newsom 
No one's going out for COVID. Except me. But I'll or, have a private what party. About, what about Lightfoot? Nobody can get no. their hair done but her. <laughs> That's right. Because right. she had to look good. And Pelosi. <laughs> and Pelosi. Nobody had the had the guts to tell her it didn't do any good. <laughs> Pelo- <laughs> Wait, Pelosi shut down I mean, the you whole think, You salon. think the hair, the hair thing the made her look any it. less scary than she looked? Right. Nancy Pelosi shut down a whole salon just to go during COVID. And then the salon owner got death threats because she posted the video of Nancy Pelosi in her salon while COVID's going on. Like, what kind of world do we live in, man? You sure it was just, it wasn't like a major rearrangement of a face? You can't do anything about that face. No, no, because it doesn't, the parts don't, I, I was told by a, a very good source that she does not have an original part. On her face. What about her eyebrows? How hard is it to draw those on every day? You, know, you notice when she has trouble, like, moving the mouth, like, how do you do? Yeah. That's because it was like rearranged this way. She's been worked on that massive. way and over this way. You know, you know who else has the Nancy Pelosi? And then sometimes the lips go in the wrong direction. And it's not helping her. Ka- Kathy Hochul has the Nancy Pelosi special eyebrows. Same eyebrows, same same thing. Man. She's afraid to yeah. say to Biden, you know, close the border, even though oh. the state's getting ruined. Yeah. She's afraid. She's afraid. She's afraid to give Clear Adams help, too. Afraid. She's afraid of everything. She's afraid of Biden. You know something, uh, Hochul? He won't even he won't even know you said it. But you think he's gonna know? Oh well, you're afraid that the real person running things will know. But we're gonna get to that later. Well, I don't know if um I don't know if Fanny Willis is over the limit in terms of campaign contribution to Trump. I mean, the way they interpret campaign contributions like information and all this other stuff. She uh, she made well, I I don't know that anyone I don't know of anyone that has contributed seven million dollars to anybody's campaign in this cycle Democrat or Republican I don't know if he can ben- donate seven million but that mugshot and it's, it's still going on first day made four million so it slowed down a little made only three million since then so Trump has uh, Trump's campaign has pulled in seven million dollars from that one uh, mugshot uh, here. This is probably the most famous mugshot in the world. Maybe the most famous mugshot ever. Certainly certainly the most valuable. (laughs) I don't think even, uh, you know, Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid ever got $7 million for their mugshot if they had a mugshot or wanted poster. Seven million bucks. Fanny, thank you. We we, we uh, want to thank you for uh, being the one uh, that was dumb enough to do that. Uh, the other three uh, Democrats, although uh, equally as uh, perverse, was smart enough not to take a mugshot, and otherwise he probably have about fifty million. Um, also, um, there was there was some there was some dispute about whether. Trump actually won the senior tournament at his golf course with a 67. And I'm going to tell you, he really is a very good golfer. And I know that because, of course, I played with him. I also know it because my son has recently played with him and called me after playing with him a couple of weeks ago. He played with him actually a couple of days ago, too, but it, and said, I can't believe I can't remember, and I wish Andrew was here. I can't remember if Andrew said he had four or seven birdies. They were playing together against excellent golfers who Andrew, I think Andrew said they were either professional or had been professional. And he said, um, that, that he, I can't believe that this guy can play like this under this kind of pressure, which kind of gives you an idea because people are wondering how's he going to run next year if they keep you know, pressuring him Although I really don't think these cases are going to take place next year. I really don't. I think that there's a very, very good chance that Trump uh, will be able to, to go into federal court under 1983 and show that this is a, uh, this is, we're talking about a, a RICO cons- a conspiracy that, that you know, we end up with four trials right before the election, like by accident. I, mean, I think, we, and then that that is preceded by uh, Russian collusion. It's preceded by uh, the phony Ukrainian conversation 
from a uh, whistleblower that turns out to be false and disproved by the hard drive that's concealed. Uh, it, uh, they um, they um, get 51 intelligence agents to commit one of the biggest lies in the history of the Republic, that, that the hard drive was Russian disinformation. <laughs> that's not a violation of his rights. Uh, interference in the election? Mm. No. Oh. Mayor, don't you find it a little suspicious? And this that ca this case is just a. I mean, I see it as a uh, as a book. Mm -hmm. the first chapter is Russian collusion. The last chapter right now is this case in Georgia. Who knows? There might be a few others. They're all part of one thing. Frame Trump. I hate to say it, but I would even throw the, the damn pandemic in. Well, who knows? Well. Who knows? A lot of the lying about the pandemic, certainly. Right. Well, man, exaggeration. Man, I was going to say, don't you think it's a little fishy how the January 6th trial is starting one day before Super Tuesday? A little, little fishy. Little it's, fish, it's, little fishy. It's, I could say it's a designed <laughs> deprivation <laughs> of his yeah. of, of his rights. A little shady. Little of shady. his First Amendment rights, his Fifth Amendment rights, his Sixth Amendment rights. How about mine as a lawyer? Of course. Absolutely. Oh, I represented him. Right to counsel. No, no, no. Not, not for Trump. Not <laughs> for Trump. There's... No. Okay. Now, uh, our uh, <laughs> a very, very, a very, very big mystery that will take a long time to solve. This, I mean, you know how how that Gilgo Beach thing? They don't know if it's one sh one murderer or, or 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 two or three or um, a lot of these cases take a very a very very hard to solve or uh, the Biden case, which has been going on now for five, six years, even though there were about a thousand pieces of evidence against him, that would prove that anybody else was guilty. By the time it goes to trial, it'll have, the, it'll probably set a record as a case with the most evidence of guilt in the history of American justice, if we ever get back to justice. But I mean, it really is a mystery to me who killed Pedrosian. I mean, that's really a tough one. You know, it, um, I mean, particularly, and particularly since Putin said all those nice things about him, I mean, can't possibly be Putin. Well, I mean, well, Putin, Putin even extended condolences to the other uh, Wagner uh, group people that right. just happened to be on the airplane and got blown up. Well, Pedrosia. Mayor Joe Biden says it was an obvious plane crash; it was an accident. So we obviously Did have Biden to, say that? we yes, we, really? yeah. It's no. the White House increasingly confident Wagner leader died in plane crash. He, that's that's no, what they no, said. but he died in the plane crash. Well, they say like right a plane crash, which yeah, they. But I don't they, believe. I don't believe. I don't believe that Biden. Th no, I don't think Biden said that. I think well, we better be careful here. All right, I don't I'm, think I'm Biden sorry, said that. President. Uh, quote, Progrosian, quote, President Biden. Progrosian was. Uh, however, we got We got to be careful about one thing. Here's the mystery. There's no mystery about about Putin. I was just being a jackass, but Putin, uh, Putin, Putin labeled Prigozhin as a, after he called him a traitor a couple of weeks ago. He now labeled him a talented, talented businessman who had a difficult fate. Yeah, he had a difficult fate. It it it, it is always a tragedy. I knew Prigozhin for many years since the beginning of the 1990s. He was a person with a complicated background. He made serious mistakes in his life. And he achieved the necessary results, both for himself and when I asked him for the common cause, as during the past few months, he expressed condolences. He's such a warm guy, that Putin. Well, well at, least he, at least he says something. I mean, Biden didn't even say anything about Maui for 10 days. He, he expressed condolences to other Wagner fighters who died in the fire. And I'm sure he'll do everything he can, uh, Putin will, to catch the murderer. Um, now, here's a little thing to be careful of. We haven't seen the autopsy or the body or whatever, or the remains or whatever the hell there is. This guy has reported himself dead twice before. He was reported dead uh, in July. And he was he faked his own death in Africa in 2019. Wow, so that would be the only mystery here. Does Prigozhin show up? You know, uh, who knows? So we are now going to take another break, and we will be talking about QUX, which you should get. 
The year is 2022. Cancel culture is the new normal. Online freedom as we know it has ended. Digital stockades are here. All activity is monitored, stored, and predictively analyzed by a technological cartel. We're being converted into a digital resource, a digital currency to be farmed for metadata and loaded into a computerized combine, blockchained to a social engineering operating system. However, it doesn't have to be this way. Be part of a new technological revolution. Right now, 1,000 test pilots have launched themselves into a new digital frontier, a private network outside of big tech control. New technology with state-of-the-art digital engagement and never-done-before security and privacy features that are now operational. With Quick's digital engagement, entertainment, communication, and commercial exchange will never be the same. We are QUX. Quicks. Advanced pre-release sales are limited to 3,000. Order now by visiting quicks.tv. Get yours now before they sell out. Be part of a brand new online experience that you control. Welcome back to America's Mayor Live, and uh, it's Balance of Nature time. Look, you know, uh, there are all kinds of supplements, all kinds of, basically they're trying to give you vitamins, and we're, we're supposed to get that from food. Of course, we don't have the kind of balanced diet and the really healthy, strict diet probably that we should have. Uh, countries that do have longer lifespans. And, but one thing you can do to help yourself is make sure you have the right amount of vegetables and fruits from which you know, all these vitamins and everything else come. So nobody's telling you not to eat them. You should. Eat, eat as much as you want, as many fruits and vegetables as you want. But to make sure that you got what you what you need, take balance of nature. The red, the red is for the fruits. The green is uh, for the veggies. And here goes the veggies, right here. Taking two of these already today. And then these two are the fruits. Listen, people, it's a no-brainer. Balance of nature, promo code Rudy. This guy works 16 hours a day. It's 8 30, 8 45 at night. He's still going. Yep, he'll yep, he'll, he'll yep. just keep we going. We did a radio show earlier. But, I mean, come on. Come on. We did a couple he of works seven days a week. This guy just works. Okay. Right here. These, this is the this is the travel size. $25 off if you go with balance of nature uh dot com promo code Rudy. 25 bucks off this. And you get a little carrying case. These I also would recommend, but this is up to you. I mean, fiber and spice. And then, if you and this and this is the actual bottles, you know, not the travel bottles, the one you keep at home. And uh, there's 35 percent off on these promo code Rudy. Thirty five percent off. I would say give it a try, and I think it's not going to take you more than a few days to feel the difference. It took me about two. Some people a week, but I think you're going to feel the difference right away. Promo code Rudy. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, we're having a lot of problems uh, here in New York with illegal migrants. Now, I know uh, that the mayor uh, will not call them illegal migrants. In fact, the prior mayor wanted to make it illegal to call them illegal. I would have thought that violated the First Amendment, but since the Biden administration has somehow abrogated or gotten rid of the First Amendment, maybe you'd go to jail for it. 
But I know of no law that prevents me from saying illegal. They're illegal. They came across the border without permission. Uh, they have made a claim of asylum, some of them, not even all of them. Uh, it turns out when they actually do get to court, only about 2 or 3% of these claims of asylum are real. And I, I, know, I, I know these are not real. You can look, you can, uh, asylum means that if they went back, they'd be politically persecuted. Sorry, that isn't the case. That's not going to happen. Nobody would even pay attention to them, unfortunately. And many of these people are fleeing poverty, but the whole world's fleeing poverty. You have to let the whole world in, which I think they want to. The other problem with their coming in is nobody investigates them. We do not know who they are. Uh, the ones that we actually intercept after they come after we help them across the border, if, and 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 we're actually going so far as to try to stop Governor Abbott from obstructing their coming in. And we show we can show pictures of Border Patrol coming and helping them come across the border illegally. I th think that's probably a crime. But in any event. We do not know who they are. So when you see here in Staten, we have in New York, we've had a big demonstration in front of Gracie Mansion that, unfor that unfortunately became violent. It should yeah. not have. Uh, and then we've had several in Staten Island that I don't think they've become violent, but they've become, people have gotten arrested for, for not following orders, including our good friend, Curtis, Curtis Slewa, yeah. who I think, I think celebrated his 80th arrest. <laughs> The other day. Well, Mayor, our good friend of the show, Scott Lebedo, is organizing all these uh, rallies in Staten Island well, and the one at Gracie well, Scott, Scott was the guy who threw, threw the pizza over. But, yeah, but he's organizing all the rallies. So he's the one getting involved. In oh, Staten Scott, Island. Is, Scott is the wow. main guy organizing all these rallies. Well, the yep. one in yep. Staten Island, the one yep. in Staten Island is really kind of crazy. They're, 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 they're taking a former, they're taking a former Catholic school called uh, St. John Villa Academy in uh, Arochar, uh, uh, Staten Island. And right now, I think they have, um, they put 300 people, they're going to put 300 of these, of, the, of these illegal migrants there. Let's call them unknown, unvetted illegal migrants. And, oh, is this? That was yesterday. That was yesterday's rally. Okay. Let's go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There it is right there. Uh, no, no, no. Oh, well, he turned it on. We'll get it. All right. So, yeah, our so, friends were there, Mayor. Cara, John Tobacco, a bunch of people showed up yesterday. All, all our, well, well, look, they don't know who they're getting. They, they're they going to have 300. They have 30 people there now. Uh, they interview one person, one couple. I mean, this is, of course, the press. That sounds, you know, I don't know where they came from. They came from Venezuela. Um, and he sneaked away from the facility with his wife and he's afraid. Um, he left behind his two young daughters and son. That's nice, huh? Nice guy. Left behind his young daughter and son. Nice guy. And, um, and he's really upset that they tell him to get out of there. We feel ba bad about that. We know we're not wanted here. What the hell did you come here for? Uh, so the city now has um, have, has had 100,000 of these illegals that have come in courtesy of Joe Biden and Mayor Adams, who invited them. Uh, he invited them specially to our city, you should know. I mean, he's making a lot of noise now that he's against us. But he, he's the reason they came to New York. A year ago, he was advertising us as the best uh, sanctuary city. I mean, we weren't just a sanctuary city. We were a sanctuary city on steroids. We, uh, we gave extra health insurance. We'd give them uh, uh, quality housing. They were getting better housing than veterans and New Yorkers, and they were being treated better than homeless people. And, uh, and they still are. We're taking care of about 60,000 of them now. It's going to go in the, into the billions that New Yorkers are going to pay for this, who never asked for it. He's the one who made us a sanctuary city, not the people in New York, certainly not the people of Staten Island.
And as I and I want you to remember several things that he and our idiot of a governor uh, and our non compass men as president don't point out. One, we do not know who they are. The ones that are stopped are really not checked out in any way. Criminal record, disease. When uh, when uh, COVID was going on, they weren't checked out for COVID. They were just shipped all over America because they really didn't really didn't give a damn about COVID, did they? Um, but you've got to remember a second thing that nobody wants to tell you. At least as many people are coming in that aren't stopped at all. I mean, they don't always they 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 they, they don't walk up and present themselves. And when a lot of people are coming in that are being stopped, a lot more people can easily get in without being stopped. So if we get a million or two million, which is the number we had last year, I think about about two million that was you got another two million to come in. We never even saw them. Well, the are- problem is somebody did see them before they came in. Mm-hmm. The cartels, right? The cartels operate on the border, like a toll booth. This is how they make their money, and they charge people to come in. They also use it. They use the chaos that's created with all these people coming in to bring in the people they want to come in, and they're getting paid big money for. It. They get little money for the little people. They get big money for the terrorists. They get, and we've intercepted more terrorists than ever before, which means more terrorists than ever before are getting in that we haven't intercepted. Get it, right? Uh, The uh, MS-13 people uh, who like to chop people's heads off. The, uh, The cartels themselves are sending their own people in in order to deal drugs in the United States, in order to human trafficking. Uh, the Chinese are uh, getting their fentanyl in and making billions, killing Amer- Americans. Uh, and and experts, including one that I met with this weekend, told me that there's bigger money in human trafficking than even drugs. Uh, which I didn't, I didn't, uh, you know, my background has been drugs back when I was a s- head of the narcotics division in the U.S. Attorney's Office. But... Um, I'm told there's even bigger money in human trafficking, children and others. <sighs> well, Mayor, I don't know if you saw the New York Post article a couple of days ago where our border doors were literally yeah, we wide showed, open. Yeah, yeah, we showed them. They were welded open. And yeah. we asked our own Border Patrol, United States Border Patrol, did you guys do this? And they said, yes, we welded the doors open. Yeah, yeah, they were, they were, <laughs> they were afraid of flooding and there was no rain. Oh, okay. They were afraid oh, sure, it sure. hasn't, you know, in 2,000 years, it hasn't flooded, but, you know. Right. They are afraid of flooding. No, Noah's Ark was the last big flood. Yeah, yeah so yeah, suppose so. it got flooded, big deal. Yeah. It got flooded. <laughs> and you know you know what they're doing? They're selling off for nothing a lot of the uh, stuff to put up the rest of the wall, and Congress is about to pass a law requiring them to build the rest of the wall. So you know what that'll mean. That'll mean they Biden can go buy another couple billion dollars and make sure that uh, Democrats get make big kickbacks on. Uh, would you like to trace the money to Ukraine? <laughs> hey, Joe, would you, like, would, you like, would you let me investigate that? Since you don't allow an inspector general for that money, which is now well over a hundred billion, um, what kind of bet should we make that some of that money is going to the to the oligarchs? It'd be, it'd be the first time in history that money went to Ukraine and the oligarchs didn't take half of it. Oh, and, and Zelensky, of course, his patron, is one of the chief and most crooked oligarchs. You've heard of Kolomoisky, haven't you, Joe? No, you probably haven't. I can't remember. But Kolomoisky is the one that laundered all the money to you through the Privat Bank. In fact, the one uh, money laundering transaction that I was able to prove against you five years ago, which I think Fox probably will reveal as a breaking news one of these days, kill me or someone will come on today. Breaking news! Latvia discovered a money laundering transaction for $3.2 million that went to the Bidens, and I got it! (laughs) Except I put it out four years ago. The whole paper... It's, it's also on my podcast, so I don't have to worry about proving it. 
That's why I want you to go back and watch the Shokin thing that goes back four years ago. Not only does it cover everything that Kilmeade covered, it covered all the things that Kilmeade didn't think of asking because he's not a lawyer. You should be receiving a call from Fox News in the next couple of days, can, Mayor. Can they please? Can they please call you? I yeah. wish they would, you know. Oh, they won't call me. They will not call. What is up with them? They won't call me. I mean, well, Fox News is going left now anyway. We don't want to be on that. Yeah, we don't want to be on You that. know, they hate Trump. They despise Trump. They're doing everything they can to destroy him on the Wall Street Journal and even, even the Post. I mean, I love the Post. I mean, the news they're a bunch of DeSantis lovers. I mean, they're... Oh, DeSantis, but they're, war I mean, they're trying to make a DeSantis comeback <laughs> Man, now. Have they given up on DeSantis oh. yet? No, no, no. He won, you know, he won the no. debate. They love, they love him. <laughs> oh. They love him. Yeah, yeah. He, you know, he, they yeah. You know, he got a million dollars after the debate. Wow. Trump got seven million for his mug shot. <laughs> and he didn't go and to the debate. Got, and he didn't go to the debate. <laughs> yeah. I was talking, I was talking to people in Italy today. <laughs> he said, How did he win the debate without going to the debate? That's it. <laughs> they said they watched the debate. Who are these people? <laughs> Tucker Carlson. <laughs> no, they were watching. They said they watched the debate. And they said, who are these people? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> who are these people? Like, like they're nobody. Yeah. <laughs> who are these people? The only guy they, I mean. And what I, do you think? The only guy, they said the only one who made any sense was that Vivek, that young guy. Yeah. The only guy who made any sense was a young guy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the Christy, they said, Christy looks like he's gotten fatter. <laughs> Gotta lay off the pizza. Should we look at this picture again? I'll put it up. You want me to get it for you? No, no, no. Uh, Chil children may be watching. <laughs> people Gosh, just we gotta get the beach picture for tomorrow night. We, the we the gotta beach. get the beach picture for tomorrow. Now, people just oh, ate boy. their dinner. We don't want to, we don't want them to vomit. Please. please no, 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 no. We've, we've had beach and he yeah. hung out on that beach. No, you don't you know, to... you have, have, I was gonna do a story and then I didn't have time to do it on <laughs> all the beach whales that we have now. <laughs> Because, because of the, the no no because of the uh the windmills of the windmills the windmills the thing there, isn't it? Oh, it's a real thing the there's something in this, part right. is real. there's something about the sound too there's some, it's some off their sonar right or yeah right. so mayor you should have Kara Cashnova on she actually covered this all for Gateway Pundit and she can come on and tell you all oh, about yeah. it if you want to do a, a yeah, special the next day or two I'll, yeah I'll contact her for you no problem yeah yeah, 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 yeah. I'm interested yeah I'm interested because that really screws them up you know if human beings were getting killed in order to further their climate change craziness, oh. that'd be okay. Human beings can get killed. But That's if if but if whales get killed, God oh, forbid. God forbid. Yeah. Speaking of beach whales, I don't know what's the worst picture of Christy, the one on the beach or the one in his baseball uniform. Oh, yeah, that that's oh come on, that, he was on my team. That's a toss up. Yeah, but mayor, come on. That that uniform is he made ridiculous. some good plays. All right. He's an and I was the winning pitcher, so I got it. <laughs> I used to be a good friend of his, you know, until he lied about me. Are we all laughing? But is that the the body of a man who is very oh, come athletic? On. Don't, come on, don't 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 make don't make fun of that. That isn't right. <laughs> it's like when Trump said you should. What did he say? What did Trump say? Call him a fat pig. Call him a fat pig. That's not nice. <laughs> I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna Mayor, tolerate that. Gonna, I'm not gonna, gonna call tolerate your calling, pig. Chris. <laughs> a large. Why are we having so much fun tonight? Pig. I guess. I guess it wasn't like a tragic, an absolutely tragic day today. Pretty bad. So they clashed outside a Gracie mansion. A hundred demonstrators. Yeah, I heard it was very violent. They threw some punches. Yeah. Wow. I saw. Because, I saw. You know, oh I saw, wow. The cowboy was there. He thought he sent me stuff. Did he get hit? The he, naked. The, the, know, the got, naked he, cowboy. He got yes. He got. Uh, what do you call it? Pepper sprayed. So the Gracie Mansion is, of Who course, the home of the the mayor, the cops, of or, New York or, City, or the, Gracie Mansion. He wound up getting well, in a truck with yeah. a bunch of Trumpers. Mm -hmm. And they were driving there, and somebody came up to the truck and sprayed it right, right. in the window at the driver and right. everybody in the truck. He told me the whole story. To count as, as Ted said, for those so of they had signs like "unvetted migrants," "our safety is in serious jeopardy," and then they had two dozen counter protesters yelling "f white supremacists NYPD." So it seemed like really nice people. Meanwhile, NYPD is the most diverse white supremacist police department yeah. in the world. NYPD yeah, yeah, as yeah. fifty cops look not. I think Curtis. I saw Curtis actually break up a fight. Yeah, he got. I saw that. I, yeah, I saw yeah, that. I saw yeah. Someone was beating up. someone with the American flag. Yeah, I saw flag him pull, pull the guy. I don't know if he was what side he was on, but no, he he didn't want anyone. Curtis didn't want any violence, no, so he pulled the guy off. Yeah, he pulled the guy off who was 
throwing punches at the Antifa scum. So here's the core. Here's the core. Here's here's the, here's the two. Here here are the two things that make this extraordinarily horrible. First of all, this is all caused by the fact that Biden is violating his oath of office by not preserving our border. I mean, there are a million things to impeach him for, but that would be one of them. I mean, a country, you can't be a country without a border. This is serious. This is an invasion. We have an invasion going on. And it may be that some of these people aren't, but, but, just, uh, but a significant percentage are selected by our enemies to come in here. And our enemies would be stupid not to take advantage of it, right? If you're China, Russia, the Islamic terrorists, drug dealers, you've got a border where anybody can cross, you'd have to be as stupid as Biden not to take advantage of it. And they're not stupid. They, you know, he, he, I don't know how he made all his money, but they're not as dumb as he is. So, so Biden is responsible for that. Adams is responsible for them selecting New York over all of the cities. I mean, they, they, a lot of them come in with New York sweatshirts on and they're all headed for New York because he, for a year, was doing this, come to New York, we love migrants, you can't call them illegal, we'll do everything for them, you'll have housing. There's a, there's a very, very sketchy right to housing, which I never recognized, by the way, for good reason. That Nicole Galinas of the Post has written an excellent article. Could be a brief in a in a in a um, in a case. Uh, and this stupid mayor, I, I don't know. I don't know if he's willing to abrogate that. I can't tell from the article. The governor isn't. But the, you don't have a right to housing. Cities can't guarantee rights. Only the Constitution can. Right. There's nothing in the state constitution that gives you a right to housing. The fact that Ed Koch, back in 1981, agreed to a consent decree to stop men from suffering physical, mental, or social dysfunction doesn't apply to... Uh, 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 two million people or four million people coming across a border who are not suffering any physical, mental, or social dysfunction. They just want to come here because they can make more money here or because they're being sent here by the terrorists, the drug dealers, the human traffickers, the cartels, China, this decree has nothing to do with that. The, the mayor could just easily say, I'm not going to follow the damn thing. It doesn't apply. Hmm. Let them sue them. But they, they sue you anyway. They never sued me. Well, mayor, I, just I, want... never, I, never even, I never even thought it applied to anything that I was doing. In any event, both he and the governor, I think, are against getting it removed. Mayor, I want to put a perspective for your listeners who don't live in New York City. Right now, since June 2023, there's 84,500 homeless people in New York City, and that's not including the migrants. So the mayor, and that's including 27,000 children. So the mayor telling people to come here as a sanctuary city is doing great injustice to our well, it's not homeless only that, New Yorkers. As Nicole Galina says, I will qu quote her, Adams is failing because he's doing everything but the obvious. Move to end New York City's spurious right to shelter, which, as I said, is based on physical, mental, or social dysfunction. It's, uh, you know, a couple of generations old. Uh, it, it is not a law. The constitutional provision merely says about this as, subject to the limitations on indebtedness and taxation, nothing in this constitution shall prevent the legislature from providing for the aid, care, and support of the needy. Well, there are, there are, there are limitations on indebtedness because we're in debt. <laughs> in any event, and who says they have the needy?
They're the illegals who have come in here. And they are making a ton of money. And, and in fact, we're hurting our needy. Yes. That's, that's what I just said. 84,000 homeless New Yorkers on the street. And Mayor Adams is telling more people come here to be homeless. And let me tell you something. The homeless shelters in New York City, I've been in them when I was EMS. They're like jail. They're actually almost worse than Rikers Island. So you, you, you don't, you don't want to be in those shelters. You don't want to be in those shelters. They're disgusting. So we need to ca we need to do something about our homeless people in New York City first before we worry about other countries' homeless people. That's my opinion. And I'm sure you agree, Mayor, right? Oh, oh absolutely. Well, these yeah. migrants... So does every sensible person. These migrants in Times Square are walking around with carts and refreshments. Right. I, I would think the businesses in Times Square should be complaining because... So what does it result in? What does it result in? taxes either. What it results in, that uh, this poll that came out the other day, 53% uh, of the people are down on New York City. They think New York City is for, what, what do you call it? Uh, they don't like where New York City is headed politically. And 40% are seriously thinking of leaving. So let's show them the, the sign that the Post put up. Okay, now leaving New York, the empire, once, I should say once empire state. We're losing population. It really depends on who's doing the counting, but it could be us, could be New Jersey, could be California. Uh, in percentage, we're probably losing more than California. They're losing more in numbers because they're bigger than us. Uh, so I don't know if we're number one, or they're number one. Notice they all have Democratic governors and they are Democrat corrupt cities and states. So, Mayor, uh, New York City has lost 5.3% of its population so far. You know, when I was mayor, we went back over 8 million. We gained population. You see that poll that says 53% down on New York and 40% think of leaving? Change it around to 75 to 80 percent thought we were headed in the right direction and didn't want to live anyplace else uh mayor that's the difference between having a competent mayor and bloomberg and having democrats and you would be right new york is the number one state in the whole country of people fleeing that is yeah. and california is actually not even and all the states there i should tell you even when you're thinking per capita no, Cal California is about is it looks like it's fourth or fifth, but New York is number one. Well, Cal California used to be number yeah, one. Yeah, Louisiana is actually the second state. A lot of people leave, leaving Louisiana. Really? Yeah, I'm wonder, short of crime and stuff like that. Yeah, you know, yeah. yeah, New mm -hmm. Orleans. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and a lot of it, of course, has to do with a lot of it has to do with um, with drugs. Um, if you look at that picture of that young woman that's jamie kale she's 42 years old she was a a gold medal winner at the 1997 pan pacific championships and swimming um she's also been a um she's won a goal a go a silver medal at the world cup in brazil and um and also one of the uh, and she was on the u.s swimming national team uh she died of an overdose of drugs but maybe it wasn't an overdose of drugs it was fentanyl in whatever she was taking so it doesn't have to be an overdose in other words you could take you could take a pill that you thought was um you know um oxycontin uh, that you bought illegally and in that oxycontin could be fentanyl because they want to save money and if they're not careful and they put just a teeny bit more fentanyl than you should put in it, you're dead. People have died uh, who take marijuana. Uh, people have died who take uh, prescription drugs, not prescription drugs from the drugstore, but prescription drugs that are on the black market that then get played with, right? And of course, people have died with cocaine and heroin and also laced with fentanyl. And one of them is this lovely young woman, Jamie Kale, who was an Olympic swimmer. I don't, I don't think, from what I can tell, she was some kind of major drug addict. When we thought of overdoses in the past, you think of someone who's a major drug addict. 
Uh, you don't think of an occasional marijuana user, even an occasional cocaine user, you don't think of as overdosing. So when you hear overdose now, you gotta be really careful. I mean, like um, last year we lost over 100,000 people to overdoses. It's one of uh, Biden's records. He has uh, the consecutive years. He has the most overdoses in the history of the United States, directly attributable to the open border. What the hell do you keep him for? I don't know. Why this guy isn't impeached, why the Republicans even sit there and haven't tried to impeach him already, or how we don't impeach him for being a numbskull. <laughs> we got a country to run here. It's serious business. Well, this young woman died, and she probably took a pill. I mean, I, I don't know her background. Allegedly, she died of fentanyl intoxication with aspiration of gastric content, meaning particles from her stomach entered her lungs. And that's an autopsy report on August 22nd was finally released. She died way back on February 21st. She's a New Hampshire native, and she was now living on the island of St. John and working at a local coffee shop. And she's dead, largely because of Joe Biden. They are opening a pot shop next to the Apollo Theater, just so we can encourage more drug use in the city. Like... Um, in fact, Adams is really high on this because we're going to make revenues on this. Now, think about that for a moment. We're going to make revenues and more people are going to get high on marijuana. To do that, we probably have to double or triple our marijuana use, which we've already done in the last three, four years. Also, the uh, strength of marijuana has increased dramatically. And we're, they're finally putting out too late to stop this ridiculous trend reports about the brain damage caused by marijuana. And if you couldn't figure out before this that marijuana causes brain damage, you don't have a brain. Of course it causes brain damage. Why do you think you get high, idiot? Especially the strong stuff that they have. And the strong stuff makes it worse. And the younger you are, the greater the brain damage. So they're opening one next to the Apollo. But I mean, they've already lost the game here. There are over a, a thousand illegal ones. Mm -hmm. And they've got, and they, and since they can't figure out how to give out the licenses because there are a bunch of, incomp among other things, they're, who knows what kind of crooked deals going on with getting these licenses. You can't tell me there isn't some kind of kickback thing going on. I know New York too well. So the, the, first, the first ingenious thing they think of, we're going to give the licenses. <coughs> <clears throat> to criminals, former former criminals, criminals, felons who were charged with with drug char weed charges. Yeah, back, we're gonna and then we're gonna we're gonna give yeah. them the we're gonna we're gonna put them in the marijuana business. They must be in the glory. They're just the opposite of what Las Vegas had to do to clean itself up to get the mob out, right? <laughs> this would be like Las Vegas saying, "We're gonna go see if we can find Fat Tony's uh, sons and daughters and put them. Let's see what's left of the mob. Let's get them back into Las Vegas." I mean, who would know more about gambling than, than the mafia? That's the idea here. Who would know more about marijuana than, than the crook, than the illegal ones that took it? So let's get them into the business and help them rehabilitate. How about the other people protecting them? So the veterans now have sued because there's a state law that allows them to participate in programs like this. And uh, like they actually did something for the country, uh, not just go to jail. What the hell's wrong with us, guys? I got, uh, I, I have a uh, Ted and Mike and Rob here. And I'm asking them all, what? I wake up in the morning sometimes. I, I had this conversation with someone recently. You may remember Ted. I had this conversation. I had the same thing that I, it goes to. I get up sometimes in the morning with something like this. You know, we're giving legal marijuana licenses to people who went to jail for marijuana. <laughs> I say to myself. Who the hell would think that? Who, who would think that? A Democrat, right? Yeah. So they've become like, what, crazy? Democrats have become crazy. They are purposely 
I know. Say, well, why would they you are. Know? No, no. Uh, uh, you're right on there, Rob. The the I know nobody person. wants to believe that, but right. they, they don't want to believe it. They, yeah. they want to destroy it like, like Soros. Why does Soros uh, put in 60 district attorneys, spend 40 to 50 million, so they'll let criminals go free and kill people? Conventional wisdom says it doesn't make sense for them to do that, but it does make sense for them because there's power at the end of the road for these people. And given Soros' background, yeah. I guess he doesn't care very much if people get killed. I don't know. Get them all on drugs. Well, oh, I mean, I mean, man, all you got to do is look at San, San Francisco, right? You you oh, know, you look at San Francisco. You look at San Francisco, you want to cry. You, you know Nordstrom, right? Obviously. Yeah, sure. Right. So Nordstrom just closed their flagship store in San Francisco because when you walk out of their store, there's guys doing drugs. There's people defecating on the sidewalk. I remember the first there's, time I saw like, that. Like, what is that? I spent... And it's becoming normalized. I spent a good deal of time in the 70s. Yes, I spent a good deal. deal. In the 70s, I spent a good deal of time in San Francisco. I was trying, I was, I was involved in a case for Levi Strauss as a lawyer, as a private lawyer. And I spent a lot of time there uh, in, uh, doing discovery and all the things that you do in a case. And uh, I loved it. I loved it. Yeah. You know, I would go and I'd go like two days early. I'd stay a day extra when I could. Like the cars? Yeah, even, you know? even sometimes I was alone. I would just go, I just... Go around on the cars and look and and you know I always you know I'm a I'm a New Yorker I, I wouldn't admit that it was prettier than New York but it was <laughs> uh, yeah it's interesting certain scenes kind of feel like Manhattan then I went one back street. we're not there yet it feels like oh, wait, New York we're not there yet. then I You're went right. back are... then I went back in the 90s when I was mayor and I saw the first uh, the homeless thing. And the urinating and the defecating. I saw like one little area where a group of people and you could see the you could see the feces on the street. Uh, and I said, This is this is what caused the plague. Right. What are you guys crazy? Are yeah, you nuts? You're right, you're right. This goes what, what are we back in the Middle Ages? I mean, and and this of course informed a lot of my thinking about homelessness. What are you nuts? You let people live on the street? I mean, we worked this out sort of like in the dark ages. When we had the plague, we figured out people shouldn't live on the street. And certainly you expected that legislation would happen and they would fix it and get it fixed. Yeah, I don't see you what know. the difference between Democrats and Republicans is about people living on the street. People should not live on the streets of a city. That's cool. why we build houses. Well, That's why we have bathrooms. I mean, Mayor, I'll give you a figure right now. That's called civilization. 158 companies managing almost a trillion dollars in assets have left New York as of June. How do you like that, New York? Yeah. Because of what's going on in the streets. Wall Street wants to leave. Wall Street wants to go to Long Island because they can't take the high rents, the crime, this and then that. And, and it's, it's just getting, when are, when are, the, we're gonna, when are we going to wake up? When are they going to stop voting for Democrats? You're I mean, Democrats. Right. all of this. Right. I, I know the liars will tell you something else. And the there liars. isn't a single damn thing I told you that isn't attributable to the programs of the Democrat Party. I mean, this is even more, this is, and remember, this is the party of slavery. So why would you be so damn surprised that they're doing this kind of crap? Yeah, they're, they're, this is, they're aiming for a technocratic slavery. And, and, and it's this party doing. that has been most infiltrated by communists. Yes. So we have a new one called Trank now. Oh, yeah. Now here's why Trank is, is really, uh, tr <laughs> Trank is a sedative for animals known as xylazine. Dr. Dr. Maria isn't here uh, tonight, but she could explain exactly what it is. But because it's for animals, it's very powerful because it's used on animals, like horses. big animals, like horses. horses. Horses, It's a horse tranquilizer, right. Mayor. Right, okay. Yeah. So if you take a little xy xylazine or trank and you put it in with the fentanyl, you don't have to use, so... Let's take let's take heroin. So if you put the fentanyl in, you can save heroin. And if you put this in, you can save fentanyl. Except uh, Trank does two things. Trank uh, causes like zombie. Yeah, it causes your skin to come off your body. Nice necrosis. Necrosis. That's it. Necrosis. I know a few things. Because you are. That's very good. <laughs> necrosis. But here's even worse. It reverses the ability to use 
uh, uh, Narcan. So the big oh. thing, the big thing they discovered for fentanyl, so everybody can take fentanyl now. This is, and this is Adams and all these idiots do this. We're, we're going to give out Narcan to everybody. So take all the fentanyl you want, and the Narcan will reverse it. <laughs> well, f first of all, you may take too much fentanyl, and the Narcan can't do shit. Excuse the, excuse the language. Doesn't do. It, 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 Narcan only works if it's a certain level of fentanyl. Well, too much fentanyl. You're done. Fentanyl wins, <laughs> Narcan loses, and you're in the grave. Mayor, serious question, though. If you identify as a horse, can you take Trank? Ah. Horse, they'll protect horses. No, I'm saying if you identify no, as a horse. nobody will allow Oh, all right. I'm nobody just saying. Will allow you, you never know these days. I'm telling you, the <laughs> liberals will not allow this to happen to horses. <laughs> they will not allow horses to take any of these things. Uh, right. You know, they're not going to let horses take marijuana. It might affect their brains. You know, well, we got to be careful with <laughs> it. These are just human beings that we're dealing with here. And we want to, and we have too many of them anyway. Because, you know, the real reason we're causing all this climate problem is we have too many people. True. I mean, they, look at a guy like Christie. Imagine all the carbon dioxide he emits. <laughs> he has his own orbit. That's yeah. why China only lets one, one child, because they don't want too many people in their country. They put a catalytic converter on his butt. Ugh. So here's what happens. If, you, if, you, if they put the trank in and you try to use the Narcan, Tough luck. The Narcan doesn't work. And they don't know. They don't know what that, I mean, it's very, uh, they, nobody can, the blood test doesn't come back immediately. So now, now your, your great magic uh, solution for fent fentanyl, which should be, don't use it, which should be, don't let it in the country, Joe, which should be, don't allow your, 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 your uh, sponsor, China, to make billions on Americans dying. Don't, you don't have to tell me why you do it, Joe. I know why you do it, because you were bribed. And I could prove you were bribed five years ago. And you're coming after me with your crooked Justice Department and all your crooked Democrats, because I'm the one that reveals you, you creep. We're going to get you, Joe. Well, Joe, you, you, boy, if anybody deserves to be punished, the damage you're doing to this country, I do not think an American president has ever done this kind of damage. Why do you hate us? Why the hell do you hate us so much? If your drug was, if your drug was at all affected by Trank, according to this study, Narcan's not going to work. So it's useless and you're dead. So let's finish. Let's finish on the uh, Joe uh, Sinoli indication of the day. Love that. Okay. Like the Bible verse of the day. Every, every day there's one they don't tell you about. Because m most of what I told you, I mean, they didn't tell you about. Uh, they didn't tell you about Shogun for four years. <laughs> but Brian, kill me, bro. Breaking news. Breaking, breaking, news. breaking news. I, I want to hear this. No, nope. not one person credited the mayor, though. That's, no, Joe. That's, that's Joe. A, Joe gave a speech yesterday. Uh, I'm sorry. No, 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 no. He put it out on Twitter <clears throat> on Friday. Posted to X. The Inflation Reduction Act is uh, projected to help triple wind power and increase uh, solar power eightfold. Well, good. We'll just kill more whales. While electricity deployed through the U.S. power grid is expected to be powered by 80 one percent clean energy by 2023 biden posted to x it had two million views accompanied by a picture of of biden uh with a selfie with an identified u.s energy worker um this is 2023 we're, we're in 2023 mayor i can confirm yeah. and we're not confirm. we're not uh we don't have 81% clean energy, about five. Uh, he meant 2030. But Joe, as, as, the, uh, as the other tweets uh, said, Joe Biden doesn't even realize that it's currently 2023. Veteran Jesse Sweeney wrote, we're in 2023 already, genius. Conservative user Rich Weinstein joked. Former GOP New York U.S. Senate candidate Paul Skypula wrote, Biden is taking stage selfies like an egomaniac 
while he brags about clean energy. Meanwhile, energy prices are going through the roof. This is this is our president. Doesn't know the year we're in. Not the brightest guy. On his number one priority, which is climate change, which, of course, he can't stop because climate change is spring, summer, right? Fall, winter, right. spring, right. summer, it's fall, even a little now these winter. Days. It's got a little cooler out. Oh, oh, well. Mayor, also, the climate change started the Maui fire, not an electrical wire that went on fire. It was climate change. We, it was obviously climate change. What, what did it cause? Co- it causes everything. Obviously. Yeah. Everything is climate change. It made, it made, it made yeah. Biden take the bribes. Right. Of course. If it wasn't for climate change, he never would have taken those bribes. And Hunter Biden is the number one guy about climate change. He and knows Hunter, all about and Hunter would not, uh, Hunter wouldn't have been collecting all that money. That's right. And laundering it to his dad. Consulting. Yeah, I mean, it was all climate change. Hunter, Hunter is the smartest. If I wanted to know the best crack to buy in a in a city, I would consult Hunter Biden, not climate change. But that's my opinion. I mean, you think that's why the Chinese pay, uh, paid him thirty uh, uh, point five million for altogether? crack? No, no, for crack advice. No, it was for climate change, apparently. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Or could it have been, <laughs> is it just possible that they paid him that in order to get Access. the influence on major policy issues of his father, who strangely <sighs> seems to have bent over backwards to do everything that China wants, including things that are totally irrational, like giving up uh, the air base 400 miles from China? Right. You're, you're talking, could it be you're possible that, that it was... A, could it be possible that it was a bribe? No, Mayor, come on, come on. Oh, that's you're, so you're talking crazy, Mayor. Like, and you think that's Zoshevsky, Russian collusion, Mayor? Zoshevsky, who got his case thrown out when uh, the Ukraine government had uh, this gigantic case against him, our State Department thought that company was the most crooked company in 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 Ukraine. They got the case thrown out. The Bidens got somewhere between 12 and 20 million from Zoshevsky. But it had nothing to do with the case no. being thrown out. Maybe we can get Chanel Rian here for one night, too. I, she, she, she might well, Chanel, Chanel got the, the uh, telephone conversations. Right. You know, uh, five months after we came back, she was able to get large portions of the telephone conversations between uh, Biden as vice president and Poroshenko, who was uh, really an equivalent of Biden, because he probably was the most crooked president in the history of Ukraine. That they used, used to describe him as, if it moves, he takes it. And uh, he wants a piece of every deal. Even with his enemies, he wants a piece of their deal. Uh, he wasn't satisfied just being an oligarch. He wanted to be the richest oligarch. Because he got defeated 70-30 by Zelensky, who was being sponsored by the money launderer, Kolomoisky. So, among other things, we have to do a serious examination of Ukraine in light of the fact that Zelensky knows all of this, has known it from the beginning, and has covered it up. So before we make him St. Zelensky, let's remember that he has covered up massive corruption at the highest levels of both governments. Well, with that thought, I'll leave you. We'll be back tomorrow, 8 o'clock, right here. We'll be on at 3 on WABCradio.com. Rudy Giuliani, we're fighting. We're going to get there. Don't lose hope. God bless America. Our purpose to bring to bear the principle of common sense and rational discussion to the issues of our day. America was created at a time of great turmoil, tremendous disagreements, anger, hatred. There was a book written in 1776 that guided much of the discipline of thinking that brought to us the discovery of our freedoms, of our God-given freedoms. It was Thomas Paine's Common Sense, written in 1776, one of the first American bestsellers in which Thomas Paine explained by rational principles the reason why these small colonies felt the necessity to separate from the Kingdom of Great Britain and the King of England. He explained their inherent desire for liberty, for freedom, freedom of religion, freedom of speech, 
the ability to select the people who govern them. And he explained it in ways that were understandable to all the people, not just the elite. Because the desire for freedom is universal. The desire for freedom adheres in the human mind and it is part of the human soul. This is exactly the time we should consult our history. Look at what we've done in the past and see if we can't use it to help us now. We understand that our founders created the greatest country in the history of the world. The greatest democracy, the freest country, a country that has taken more people out of poverty than any country ever. All of us are so fortunate to be Americans. But a great deal of the reason for America's constant ability to self-improve is because we're able to reason, we're able to talk, we're able to analyze. We are able to apply our God-given common sense.